人とも先に下で待て源氏ご苦労そのドレスはそこへ置いていけかしこまりましたそれではお役目さ我らは先に行こうエアトリーチ後ほどなうん。ケンジーレフスタディング。なぜわらわがそなたに肌を見せることを恥じぬかわかるかそなたは家具だからだ。家具。わかるか家具だよ、家具。家具に体をさらして恥じるものがどこにいよう Sure, sure, exhibitionist. だからお前にわらわは恥じる必要がない<笑> The witch rose and the jacket slipped off, just from his shoulders. As of that, the jacket fell to the ground with a thump. When the furniture respectfully approached to pick up his clothes, the witch gave it a small kick and it fell over. Furniture was afraid of what misconduct it might have shown. So, Nata, a cargo no bunzai de. Wara wa ni mizukara botan o hazi sase ru tsumori na no ka. Tate, so ste kono botan o hazi se. Hito tsuzut. Tene. And here I was thinking she just magic the clothes onto herself. Hayak. Utskushiku. So, so naku. 客人たちを待たせてしまうぞ。早くわらわを着替えさせろ。丁寧に外すのだぞ。そなたの目玉一つよりも高価なボタンであるぞ。間違ってちぎるようなことがあったなら。代わりにそなたの目玉を縫い付けてやる<笑> The entrance hall was bustling with a crowd of shadowy people. Sparkled gold with the gold butterflies flying about. The gentlemen in suits and tuxedos and the ladies in dresses looked like they were having a great number of friendly chats. At a glance, it might have looked like a fabulous medieval ball. But they all had one thing in common, and that thing was exceedingly bizarre. Because each of them, or because all of them, had goat's heads. Was the goat mask masquerade, or did they really have goat heads? Probably couldn't be the latter, but in this bizarre world, I really didn't know which was true. Kinzo was amongst those goat nobles greeting them. Kinzo's greetings were more respectful than one would have expected, as though these were all on guests. At that time, Genji's voice rang out through the hall. It was a voice calling for silence. That voice stopped with idle chatter, and everyone turned to face Genji. こよい復活を遂げましたる我らが黄金の魔女ベアトリーチェ教のご入場でございます皆様拍手をもってどうかお迎えくださいゲンジー began to applaud quickly spread through the guests and became a roaring ovation then the golden witch appeared from the top of the large staircase as she gracefully waved her hand Followed by a piece of furniture she was fond of, she slowly descended the staircase. Goat nobles offered unanimous words of celebration in some long forgotten language, and those who were deeply intimate embraced, filled with joy at their reunion. As the witch offered greetings of reunion, the witch's furniture followed behind her the whole time. There was a chain around its neck, the other end was gripped in the witch's hand, like it was a trained dog. It wasn't there to restrain him. 
Those chains were restraining devices whose only purpose was to wound Fenner's dignity. He wasn't permitted to wear anything else on his body. One of the young woman goats mixed in with the goat nobles. Quietly removed her goat mask as the furniture passed in front of her, and she spoke with eyes that had no light in them. That face seemed to belong to a long haired young girl. I'm not sure if I can have that as thumbnail on YouTube. Hmm. <laughs> After saying only that, the witch called Bianca still once again put on her goat mask. It was swallowed up by the shadows of all the other tall goats. <laughs> Young woman goat skittled, with which once again let out a high pitched laugh. Koyoiwa, <laughs> さあ、今宵を When the witch announced the beginning of the banquet, the large clock pointed at 12, uh, 24 midnight, and the sound of the bell began to ring out. Perhaps Bernke still, still has something planned? It's TARDIS! Uh, All at once, butterflies leafed in gold flew all around the inside of the room. Amidst the golden storm and the brilliant gold coloured light, the barrier between this world and another was cut open. Surrounded by the goats' delighted voices, the mansion of the human world and the mansion of those not human overlapped. And the members of the household she praised the resurrection of the golden witch scattered into gold butterflies. And poured out of the depths of hell. It was a golden tornado, a rondo of golden demons. Come, tonight we will put aside rank. Throw open the wine cellar, drop the snake's head into the liquor pot, throw cows and chickens into the furnace alive, drink and eat and sing and dance, near and kill, and desecrate and degrade. The goat nobles were suddenly crushing in around Kinzo, almost like there were kids demanding the signature of some famous movie star. There are only two differences. First, the kids were witches, not kids. And second, a piece the witches demanded was not a signature, but a soul. Uh, the sea of goat nobles began to drown Kinzo, and Kinzo's laughing voice echoed throughout the area. What's that supposed to be? It's a grand mixture of laughter and his death throes. So, I guess a mouth, teeth, and then fangs. And Kinzo began, uh, became wine and meat and bread. Aroma of slurped, rich taste of gnawed, and pleasant to tear to bits. 
The sound of his death throes lingered on sweetly. And if adorned with melted chocolate and golden argent, it would make a wonderful dessert. If you took the bones home, you could also use them in the soup. And the remains could even become toys for the children to play with. They could also become splendid tools for fortune telling. It always brought misfortune. That entire scene was watched by the furniture. It was all fantastical. It was all demonic. Was the quaking of its supposedly paralyzed heart proof that it could still feel fear? At that time, its knees buckled, and the furniture's body fell down in the middle of the carpet. After all, the witch had kicked those knees from behind. <laughs> He's about to reject her, maybe? The furniture let out a painful voice. Fear is the most basic emotion humans have. Was that emotion reviving his sense of self, which should have already been slain? <laughs> まだまだわらわの家具には相応しくないか。よい。じっくりそなたを。わらわ好みふさわしい家具に仕上げてやる。今のそなたにできるのは、せいぜい客人の方々を楽しませることくらいか。Oops. The great nobles were surrounding the crouching furniture. It seemed their blazing, blood-red eyes couldn't hide their ecstasy of this new, young food they'd been given. Uh -huh. And from the ugly teeth that stuck out of countless mouths, saliva, maybe the traces of meat and wine they had just eaten, dribbled down. <laughs> As the furniture let out a wild scream, it retreated, still sitting on its backside. The circle of great nobles was closing in. Then, the furniture looked at the witch's face. It had surrendered to the witch, so, believing that the witch would show some compassion, it stared at her face in the end. There was nothing but scorn of the witch's face, and she wasn't even facing the furniture anymore. The witch went off to greet an honoured guest with whom she'd crossed gazes. Great nobles looked down upon the furniture. Actually, they'd been waiting. Just like one, how one must remove the cork in order to drink champagne. They had to wait for one thing before partaking of the offering, ser offering served at this banquet. Of course, the furniture didn't know about this thing. It came out of his mouth all by itself. Just like the unavoidable pop of cork, it inevitably came out of his mouth. It was a scream. It was a sign that marked the beginning of a modest banquet at which he was to be served. <laughs> By now, the garden was one of both roses and gold. A gold-coloured garden where gold butterflies, gold fairies, and gold lizards 
rampaged and flew about wildly. Maria, hayaku! Hasite! Hayaku, hayaku! Hayaku, hayaku! Grace had grasped her gun and the blankets wrapped around her, being it, and ran at speed Maria couldn't match, sometimes pausing to call out Maria to run faster. So she saw it every time. She saw all the golden pursuers chasing them from the mansion. A massive gold butterflies was chasing after them like a massive crawling hand. And strange looking shadows of goats' heads were chasing after them. There was no need for her to stay, strain her eyes, because those blazing peoples told her what would happen if she was captured. Maria fell down. For just an instant, Rosa was ashamed by thoughts of abandoning her daughter and running away, and at the instant her feet touched ground, she ran back. The goat head with a sprinted over to get the first bite, grabbed hold of the back of Rosa's own child's hair and pulled. Rosa rammed into the goat's head with her shoulder, spun, bashed the back of her elbow into the goat's jaw, and buried her knee into the protruding chest. And she thrust the barrel of a gun inside the goat's head's mouth as it doubled over from the pain in its gut. The blast from the Winchester 45 caliber long Colt bullet exploded inside the goat's head's throat. And this medulla oblongata was instantly pulverized. The goat head hadn't understood. It thought women were like pre-opened wine bottles. It had thought that turning them upside down would immediately make their deep red contents come out. <coughs> Maria, who had been released, hugged Teresa. But the pursuers were still coming. They could see the giant oh, goat heads, who had given up pretending to be human running towards them from across the rose bushes. Rosa spilled several extra bullets, which had been in the pockets of her coat, all over the place, and told Maria to pick them up. Mario,ママがもし倒れたら、あなたは走りなさい。海岸へ行くの。そして、泳いで泳いで泳ぎなさい。doesn't seem to be raining anymore, at least. <laughs> Rosa's gun roared four times. But even though four shots really did hit the massive approaching goats in the chest, they didn't even flinch. The goats ran with a violent figure, as if they planned to crush Rosa and Muriel with those massive bodies. <laughs> Rose was a grass blanket with the English in both hands, and she herself sprinted, pulling it along, without even an ounce of fear of those strange looking giants. If to protect my daughter, I will overcome even hell. <laughs> Rosa roared. The goat heads roared. That terribly heavy ingot, after picking up a fearsome centrifugal force and speed, slammed into the head of the goat head. Wait, did it just say slammed into the head of the goat head? It did. Okay. Rosa pulled a fountain pen from her pocket, but she held it crooked. She placed it in her palm, with a gap between her middle finger and her ring finger, so it, uh, it stuck out when she made a fist, almost like a stinger was growing out of it. The stinger sliced into the left eye of Goat Head as it fell over. And Goat Head's roar a scream? But Rose's roar was different. She pulled back her fist and slammed it into the fountain pen that was still sticking into the Goat Head's eye. The pointed tip was gouged into the depths of its head. Mama, 
As I grab the gun rear head train, I finally heard the thunderous crash of a giant tumbling to earth. Wasn't it using third person until then? However, at the same time, I saw the goat head pursuers on the other side of the rose bushes increase in number. I've gained enough distance for now. I held onto the blanket wrapped around the ingot with a gun, and once again ran with Muriel. Why am I running with a gun in my right hand and the gold in my left? Why don't I let go of one hand and grasp Maria's hand? I can't let go of a gun that protects my body. I can't let go of gold that protects my future. But even so, I've let go of the hand of my daughter, the one who is my future. Run, run, run. She got out of the rose garden and began to run down the staircase through a grove of trees. The rose are new. His path through the grove turned and twisted many times, it only seemed to be long. She tore straight through it. She played here often since her childhood years, so she knew. To the beach, to the beach, to the sea, to the sea, to the sea. And after reaching the sea, nothing to do but swim, swim, swim. And if Maria can't swim, I'll carry her as I swim. There's nothing but death on this island. <laughs> As she raced down the stairs, she took a bad step. A violent pain ran up her left ankle, and her mind went completely blank. Rosa fell down several stairs, shocked at by her ankle, which is bent at an odd angle. And the blanket with the, gold, with the ingot wasn't there. She had let go of it the instant she had fell, and it disappeared somewhere into the darkness. Only the gun was left. Tremors in the earth were getting closer. It was only a matter of time before the goat heads flooded in. She didn't want to imagine how many of there would be, or how strange they would look. The lightly dancing gold pursuers arrived, and the gold butterflies surrounded Rosa and Maria, waving and clamouring as they were saying, The prize is here! The prize is here! Rosa couldn't even try to get up. The violent pain from her broken ankle was so great that she couldn't ignore it even in her last moments. Ah, what am I doing? I had the gold, which would have been worth several million yen. I might have been able to start over with that. And yet, I fell, lost it. And now my own life is in danger. And Maria's too. What has my life been? I was born into an incomprehensible family. With the irritating old siblings since the day I was born. What did I do? No matter what I did or didn't do, I was always in trouble, bullied, and made fun of. What has my life been? Mama! 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 Roar inside Rose's heart shriveled away and disappeared. It disappeared when she heard Maria's crying voice as she sobbed and clung to Rosa. Maria! Mama! Just a little bit of a time. I'm going to go マリアはこんな悪いママでもママと一緒がいいと言ってくれるの。ママと一緒がいい。ママと一緒がいい。あなたのことを一番にしているように見せて、いつもあなたのことを後回しにしてきた。運動会に行った、授業参加に行った。で
たら怖いママも優しいママも一緒、うん、マリアにはたった一人ラマなの私はなんてバカだったの黄金なんかいらなかったただあなただけの手を引いていればよかった私はなんてバカなママだったのThe shadows of goats cover the sky even more thoroughly than the trees of the forest. Their roars blotted out the world with fear. Rosa, still hugging me, ready to gun with one hand. Maria, let's go together. Let's go together. Let's go together. Let's go together. She had bought it as a birthday present, and then hadn't played it with Maria after that first night. Those eyes, sparkling like red hot lava, looked just like a group of fireflies. They danced, closed in, and attacked. <laughs> it was chambered with love. <laughs> seagulls cried and none were left alive. Return of Gold Witch, Episode 2, Tips Hunter, Characters Hunter. Gold Witch has prepared a gift in commemoration of your recent session. The new elements may be accessed from the title screen. Uh, so we're getting a new tea party. I'm guessing we're not getting a new yeah, tea party of the unhuman. Um, yeah, so... I think I'm going to leave it there for now. I'll do the uh, tea party next time. And uh, this, looking at it, I'm going to probably split it into two parts. So I hope you've all enjoyed. Uh, let me know any feedback you have in the comments. And until next time, when we do the tea party. Or at least the first tea party, the normal tea party. Um, yeah, until next time, I uh, hope you enjoyed. And see ya.